two, one. Welcome to a live episode of Guns and Guitars. And today we've got a couple of cool things to unbox. I've actually got a lot of stuff to unbox. Depending on how quickly we get to it, there might be some bonus items. But firstly, I just wanted to show you what I'm working on this week. I didn't get my video done because I ran into some snags along the way. But this is a awesome neck that I made out of some plain maple that I found at Home Depot. And it's a 24 fret uh, multi-scale base neck. And I even put some sweet texturing on the back to try out that idea. And uh, it turned out absolutely beautiful. And the neck is done. The video is not done. I could have rushed to finish the video, but what I actually want to do is actually install this neck on a base, set it up and see how it plays for my video. So uh, that video, that's obviously gonna take a lot more time. So um, that video will be uh, coming at you next week. And so I just wanted to give you a sneak preview. So thank you for joining me live. We're gonna unbox this. This is the Pitbull Guitars TV4. And uh, I'm gonna adjust the camera so you can see better. Your mom's watching. Mrs. Gunn's mom is in the comments. Everyone say hi. Mother-in-law guns. Mother-in-law guns. <laughs> All right, so Pitbull TV4. Um, if you don't know what the TV stands for, it doesn't stand for Thunderbird. Uh, we'll just say that. Um, Adam over at Pitbull Guitars uh, has agreed to help uh, get some of these kits in my hand so that I can review them, which is awesome. But he explicitly said that he doesn't want to have to deal with any trademark issues so i'm not allowed to say that these are like clones of actual things so it's definitely not a thunderbird we can call it a thunderbird or a thunder turd <laughs> my wife just rolls her eyes at me it's my life you guys all right let's go ahead and let's cut this box all the way off And let's see what we got here. Pitbull stuff is always packaged so well. I mean, look at that extra filler that they put in to prevent this thing from swinging around. I always really appreciate that. Can't tell you how many kits I've opened up and the neck is like on top of the body and the hardware bag is like smashed in the cavities and it's like terrible. So got all our typical, uh, instructions and where to find help on their forums and everything. And then let's have a look at this body. I believe it is a basswood body. And there we go. And it looks very basswoodish. And uh, this is nice. This is real nice. Very smooth, like nearly finished sanded, very close to finished sanded. I don't see any tool marks really on it. That's very cool. We got some soap bar pickup routes. We got our Gibson three point bridge. Sorry, uh, our uh, um, not Gibson three point bridge. <laughs> I don't know what it sounds like Gibson. Um, anyway, so we got that. We got our uh, pre cut pick guard. And I appreciate that they didn't pre drill the holes for the pick guard. That's nice. So I can decide if I want to have the pick guard or not. But it, the pick guard looks like it's cut really well. So um might use it it's not like a three ply it's just a single um you know white pick guard there's no black stripe in the middle of it um let's see what kind of hardware came with it looks like it comes with black hardware that's pretty cool some base strings there some black knobs, black output jack, black tuning machines, and looking for that bridge. There's the black bridge. Let's go ahead and pull that out and have a look at it, see what the fit and finish is on it. And uh, this actually doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of machine marks on it. Um, the question will be, and the question always is, um, does this, is this black paint conductive? Um, because oftentimes when they're painted with a really thick black paint, same with the tuners, 
then when we run our bridge ground wire, then it doesn't actually make um, a conductive connection to it. I guess we could test that with a voltmeter right now. We might as well make sure that that's in the... <clears throat> So this will tell us if that uh, if we run a bridge ground to one of these posts that holds the bridge, if it's actually going to transfer it to the strings, because we want the strings grounded to help with our Faraday cage, right? So go ahead and put this on our beeping setting. So should beep if it's conductive. So we'll put one on this side and one on this side. Yep. Yep, so that's gonna be an issue. So we're gonna to have to sand down wherever there's metal contact with the uh, with the strings. So we'll sand down inside the saddles there so that it makes good connection with the strings. We'll also sand down where it meets with the post. And I don't know if the posts are painted black or not. If they are, we'll have to sand off the paint on those as well because that's where we're gonna run our bridge ground to. Um. There's a knob. And the posts are inside this hardware bag. And yes, you can see the posts are painted black as well. I'm gonna go ahead and assume without opening this up yet that that is not a conductive paint either. So we're gonna have to sand that off because we're gonna run our, it's actually already pre-drilled, that's nice. There's a pre-drilled uh, ground connect wire. But if we don't make sure that we sand that and give it good, um, contact, then it's not going to make any difference. So we do want it to make a difference. So we'll have to sand off some paint so it makes good contact and then sand off paint on all the points where it contacts as well. So, and then of course, before we string it up, we'll have to test it with a voltmeter to make sure that it is actually making solid ground connection all the way across. What'd you say? Oh, because that's what TB stands for. This is the TB4. So yeah, okay, so we'll call it the tuberculosis kit. This is <laughs> this is the tuberculosis four string from Pitbull. All right. Thunder thighs with huge bottom end. I like that. All right, let me um, put this voltmeter to the side. The real important question from here. Also, this is a bolt bolt on neck. You guys know that the uh, variant that this is loosely based on is typically a neck through design. Um, there are kits out there that are a set neck design. And again, I'm loving all this extra packaging that they put in. And this is wrapped really well. It wraps like a hundred times. There we go. The neck being the most important part of the kit, this determines if it's going to be a good tourniquet instrument or not. So before we even see the fit, we're going to look down at it and it looks pretty straight. It's definitely straight along this edge. This edge looks like it might have a little dip in it right here. Um, it might, well, it just, it's not a dip. It just kind of slowly tapers off there towards the, towards the top. So that might be something we can fix with the truss rod adjustment. Um, I won't really know until I put a notch straight edge on it. Uh, but let's see the neck fit. And they didn't pre-drill where the screws connect to the head, but they did pre-drill the actual screw holes. So that's kind of nice. And our fit is, ooh, that is wonderful. Look at that. That is a nice fit. Perfect, not too tight, not too loose. Wonderful. I assume, that the neck angle is right for the style of bridge that they expect us to put on there. Don't know if I will stick with the three-point bridge. I don't like three-point bridges. You guys know that I have a bridge that I do really like, but it's not gonna cover up those holes. So we'll have to plug them if we end up using those holes. Um, and I'm actually thinking, I'm thinking I'll, when I build this up, I'll probably plug these holes and put my own bridge. That way I don't have to worry about the bridge being having that black paint on it um, and not being conductive. So, all right. Oh, I didn't show you guys the headstock, I don't think. 
So the headstock is pre-shaped. I would prefer a blank paddle headstock, um, but this is, I mean, again, oh, same with the body, it's finish sanded really well. Like you definitely will want to go over it again uh, before you paint or stain just to make sure, but I don't see any tool marks and it feels nice and soft and the edges are even, uh, the corners and stuff are really soft. They're not like hard corners. So really well done. I'm really impressed. I think this is going to be a really fun kit to build. Um, while I get out the next box, why don't you guys go ahead and let Mrs. Guns know uh, in the comments if you have any questions about this kit. I'll leave it open so I can answer them if, if I need to look at it to answer the question. But the next thing we're going to unbox is this. I think somebody mentioned in the comments that they thought it might be a Glary, and they are correct. This is a five-string jazz bass called the, the G-Jazz, the Glary G-Jazz. And I'm very excited for this because this bass only costs 129 bucks for a five-string jazz bass. That's awesome. You can't even get a kit for that price, much less a five-string kit. What am I supposed to do with these fingers? People are, if they have any questions about the Pitbull TV4 kit, the tuberculosis four-string kit. Any questions about that? No questions about that? Okay. It's a weird question. Butterfly effect. Okay. Is it, is it appropriate? <laughs> it's about using egg whites as a brain filler. Um, so the butterfly effect asks what? What's your opinion about egg white as a brain filler? Um, I've never tried it. I don't know why I would. There's so many dedicated green fillers out there. I mean, maybe if I was doing like a... Uh, like a Burl's art thing where I was like out in the in wilderness and, and building a guitar out of stuff that I find and I found like quail eggs, then maybe I would use that, you know? Um, I think even he used like pitch or sap or something like that to, to grain fill his guitar. Anyway, I, I wouldn't. I have grain fillers. I Firstly, I you guys know that I am now a huge fan of shellac and shellac is an excellent grain filler. So I would I would just use that since I have a big can of it. Um, I typically don't fill the grain though because I like wood grain, you guys know. And as a result, I usually leave the grain open so that when I stain it or dye it, the grain is exaggerated. What electronics come with the TV4? What? Oh, that's a good point. I didn't pull out the pickups. Okay, somebody who asked that? Um, why list deck six of the world untie? Lick, list deck stick. <laughs> I like that. That's funny. Asked what are the electronics that came with it. So let's have a look. I didn't actually didn't take a very close look. So we've got three pots. Uh, three. Let's see what kind they are. 500K. I've got a B500K. A B500K. And an A500K. So I got two uh, linear taper and one audio taper pots. I've got a capacitor. And so it probably, this in my opinion is backwards to me, but it is standard for uh, the Gibson brand, which uh, this kit may or may not be loosely based on, is that they would use linear taper pots for volume and audio taper pots for tone, whereas the whole rest of the industry does it the opposite. They would use audio taper for volume. That way you get a much more even volume as you, um, as you roll it on and off. And then you would use the linear taper pot for the tone. And again, that will give you a little more even response. But uh, this is backwards. So we'll see what I end up doing when it's time to build it. So that's the electronics. So it's just uh, volume, volume, tone. So jazz bass layout. Uh, no, I don't think, yeah, there's no three-way switch. And then um, actually that's a, that's a true Gibson layout. It would also have a three-way switch, which this one does not. So I guess it's more of a fender layout with a Gibson twist on those pots. And then we got two, they're just uh, soap bar pickups. This <laughs> clearly wax potted because uh, this one has wax all over it. Um, so not a whole lot of love in these pickups. And you can see they're, they're epoxy dipped and you can see, uh, this is actually really not a good thing. I'm actually gonna show you close up because I'm actually a little bit surprised about this. Um, let me turn my microphone around towards me. And I'll clip it somewhere. There we go. Okay. 
So you can see on this pickup here, they didn't dip it all the way into the epoxy. The epoxy is supposed to seal it to help protect it. And it didn't get all the way dipped. So you can see the wax in there from where they wax potted it. And then they were supposed to dip it in epoxy. And unfortunately, you can actually see the copper cable. It's kind of a mess in here. And I don't know if this is part of the coil. I don't know if this is part of the coil or not. I sure hope not because it's loose um, and, and broken in a spot. So we'll have to test to see. Actually, we can pull out the voltmeter and we can test to see if this pickup is still good or not. Um, that we can do that right now. Let me put my mic back around the other direction. But I'm glad you asked that question because I forgot to look at the pickups entirely when I unboxed it. So we got a voltmeter. We're going to read resistance. And uh, so we'll, as a control, we'll see this pickup, what it reads. So we got uh, red and white are soldered together. Black is hot. Green is soldered to the bare shield. So green would be ground. Black is hot and green is ground. I think that's Seymour Duncan color codes. I could be wrong on that. Anyway, let's see what kind of resistance reading we get. All right, so this is 14.95 kilo ohms. That's a really hot pickup. Um, I guess that's uh, pretty normal for a humbucker, maybe a bridge position humbucker. Um, and then this one, let's see what we kind of reading we get on it. This one's getting 15.3 kilo ohms. So this is actually the bridge one. And that tells me that this pickup is actually fine. So these extra copper wires are probably just leftover that uh, probably, I don't know, um, or just sitting in whatever machine shop where these pickups are wound. They probably just have pieces of copper wire floating around. And when they dipped it, it probably floated in and got stuck. So not great quality control on this pickup, unfortunately. Um, but we'll, we'll probably plug them in, just see how they sound at least. Um, but then I'll probably replace them. Um, maybe with some pickups from my custom shop, see if they can do some soap bars. All right, good question. Any other questions about this stuff? We'll have it out. So one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this glary base is because I had a uh, Fender 72 reissue Marcus Miller jazz bass that was a four string. And I liked it so much that I wanted to get a five string version also. And then I actually decided to just string it bead tuning. And that was my first experience playing in bead and I fell in love with it. So then I didn't bother buying the five string version. But I always wanted a five string version. And this looks very, very, very similar to it. Although, that Marcus Miller base is like a thousand dollar base and I don't have it anymore. I sold it when I hit the road uh, to a good friend of mine for a ridiculously good price under the condition that he can never sell it and that I can buy it back for that same price at some point. Um, but I'm thinking I don't expect this Glary to be playable right outside the box based on my previous experience with Glary. Why am I trying to save this film? Let's just cut it. Um, and the experience of others that I've seen on the internet. So it's going to need some work. I expect that, especially at 129 bucks. I mean, come on. It's not going to be a good player right out of the box. I don't know that. But it sure does look pretty. Ooh. Look at that. Yes, I'm very excited for this base because this is actually the Tobacco Burst version. Um, mine was just the... Uh, just the solid uh, white ash version when I had my Marcus Miller base, which they also have a version of, Glary has a version of. Um, but I always thought that if I bought a second one, a five string, uh, then I would get the tobacco burst so that I had to do two different finishes. So I'm sort of kind of like living the dream here. Um, let's see what else is in the box. We got a strap. And uh, I think if I recall correctly, it's like a child size, comically small strap. But my son's been asking me for a guitar strap, so this might be perfect for him. Let's see. Yeah, look at how small this thing is. 
that's the full extension right there. It's going to be way too small for me, but that'll be good for my son. So uh, don't expect to use the strap if you're an adult. We got our, oh, I love it. The classic glary oversized Allen key. These are awesome. This is so great for when it's time to adjust your truss rod. I don't know why more companies don't use these oversized Allen keys. It's wonderful. Having an extra long like that. Beautiful. Uh, your standard um, instrument cable, nothing special. And uh, my wife gave me the 20 minute warning, so we only got 10 minutes left in this live stream. And then there's also a smaller Allen key for adjusting the bridge saddles. Um, and then this appears to be a soft case. And we're, we're not going to call it a soft case. We're going to call it a dust cover. Let's be honest. There's no padding in it whatsoever. So again, for 129 bucks, what do you expect? Uh, at least they gave you something to store it in. But uh, um, I was going to hustle because I was going to try to unbox something else. But I don't think I'm going to. I think instead, I'm going to tune this thing up and see how it plays. And uh, do I have a tuner in here? I don't think I do. I have a tuner in here, but it's out of battery. And I don't want to run back to my other guitars to go grab a tuner. So we'll just. We'll loosely tune it by ear. Um, I'm going to reposition the camera. All right. And this is a uh, guitar amp, so don't blame tone or distortion on uh, the quality of the guitar. This knob is not very tight. It kind of turns infinitely. <laughs> but the pot doesn't, just the knob. That's funny. So they all do. Not very good quality knobs. All right, so. Funnest video watching me tune the guitar. on my four and five string tuner pegs. That's how long it's been since I played a five. Oh, I did it again. Good job. Totally. Oh, I 
literally just did it again. Wow, what's wrong? With you? There it is. The action is atrociously high, which probably means the frets are bad. Um, it's the, the, the neck relief is terrible. Let's see if we can't adjust that just real quick. If not, I'm not going to stress too much about it. Luckily, they give us this extra. Oops. I'm trying to move this to where you can see what I was doing. Forgot that I changed the camera position. So this extra long Allen key is really helpful. We don't have to loosen the strings to make adjustments, which really helps um, you get there faster. So we need a lot more. That was about a half turn. It's going to need at least a full turn. Probably needs another. So it's still atrociously high and we're already getting fret buzz. I knew this thing was going to need some fret work, um, but it sounds like a jazz bass. I think the intonation is probably way off too. See, I can't get the fifth fret and the seventh fret in tune together. So uh, it'll need some intonating. It'll need a full setup and stuff, but... I think this is going to be a cool, cool instrument. Definitely going to need some fret work. We'll give it a full setup and see if it plays. I doubt that it will, um, just from what I know from Glary. But yeah, so you guys can see, there's a headstock, tobacco burst finish, chrome hardware. Still got the plastic on the pickups. That's probably not doing anything for the tone. Go ahead and pull that off. That still sounds the same. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me for this uh, unboxing live stream. I've got more stuff to unbox, so maybe I'll do another live stream on Monday just to unbox some more stuff. Thanks for joining. Uh, actually, before I sign off, are there any quick questions about the Glary that I can answer? And uh, if not, then we'll just say good night and go get some dinner. Mrs. Guns is typing furiously. <laughs> They do need a lot of work, but I mean, you're saving some money, a lot of money. I mean, like I said, the uh, the 72 reissue Marcus Miller version was um, over a thousand dollars for for the five string. I think it was twelve or thirteen hundred. Oh, I should say too, it's got a really nice light weight to it. I don't know what kind of wood this is. I thought it would be basswood, but it feels lighter than basswood. So uh, who knows? The neck is definitely really solid. It's very, I mean, it's a thick, chunky five string neck. So the neck is definitely going to be durable. So once we get it set up and do some proper fret work to it, I imagine it's going to be a great neck. Body again, nice and lightweight. So if we wanted to add a preamp like my Marcus Miller did, um, we could do so. We could also add a high mass bridge and stuff without making this thing be like monstrously too heavy to, to gig and play, which is more than I can say about my Marcus Miller bass which is actually the reason why I try my best to build lightweight basses because that was my main gigging bass back when I made my living as a bass player. And the thing was so darn heavy. I think it weighed like 10 or 11 pounds. And man, after, after playing like a four hour set, my back and shoulders were so sore. 
and so I, I appreciate that this is much lighter weight. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, oh, I just noticed that uh, the strap button is loose. So good thing I didn't put the strap on because that probably would have stripped right out. So yeah, needs a little bit of work. I expected that. Um, and so when I do my review video, I probably won't even try to plug it in and play it as is. I'll probably just go straight to fixing it up. That way we get a good idea, not necessarily of what this is, but what it can be. Because that's that's the thing that I love most about Glary is everyone knows that you know their stuff is not great out of the box. They cut a lot of corners, quality control when it comes to setup, um, but they do a great job on the finish. Like this finish is beautiful. I mean, it's it's perfect. And it was the same with that ES three thirty five style guitar. The finish on it was great. And the neck, you know, it's it's carved really well. I can tell that it's really heavy duty. And so it's got good bones. The fret ends are a bit sharp, as you'd expect. <laughs> um, and so, like I said, but th that's all fixable stuff. You know, you can gut the electronics and put in some good electronics. These might sound fine. Well, I'll definitely demo them um, as is before upgrading them. You can find it on Amazon? Yes, you can find this on Amazon, I think. Actually, I don't know if you can find it on Amazon. If, there, if you can't find it on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description for those watching the replay. And uh, if not, I'll put a link to Glary's website where you can get it. Um, but yeah, I, I think, like I said, it has good bones. It has a good heart. Um, you know, just a few upgrades, like my, my best budget bass upgrades video, if we, did, if we did this bass with that treatment, you'd have a really, really nice bass for really not a lot of money. And so that's, that's what I love about Glary. So they, they kind of put the effort in where it counts, where it matters, and not so much where it's something that we can actually fix. You know, I've, I haven't seen any glares that come so bad that they're not worth keeping and fixing. So uh, that's what I appreciate about Glary. And um, yeah, there we go. I think, that's, I think that's probably good. We'll call it a night. We'll go get some dinner. Thanks, guys, for joining. We'll see you uh, next week.